falls on the first airplane. If that 172M just hoses it up, um, <laughs> he's buying a lot of lunches. In that uh, let's see here. Departing flying cloud, be ready for takeoff and call the tower as you taxi. I mentioned uh, prior to calling ground here and taxiing down Spring Lane, getting on Bravo 4, Bravo, and out to the runway. Um, uh, complete your before takeoff checklist and do your run up right there. You're not going to be prop blasting anybody if you are. Maybe taxi forward a little bit, turn a little bit, whatever you need to do. But be ready for takeoff. We don't want people jamming up in a teeny little tenth of an acre run up area at the end of runway 28 left. Um, trying to do run-ups and things like that. We don't have time for that and we don't have room for that. So do your run-up where you're parked on Spring Lane. Release the brakes, taxi out, call ground as you approach the end. Again, somewhere, somewhere in, once you're cross, you cross 36, somewhere here I would say crossing Delta, switch over to Tower, which may be earlier than some of you are used to and that's okay. Switch over as you cross Delta. Assuming we're on 2A left, and just listen. You know, listen for a couple of calls, and when the airplane that's in front of you calls, call after them so the tower's got the right sequence. Tower has the same sequence that you guys have, again, minus the names and the altitudes that are assigned, but they have the same sequence. So they should be able to cross reference, but it's one tower controller also handling all of in flight's traffic, doing pattern work and stuff like that on 2A right on a Saturday morning when it's 70 degrees outside. So um, uh, just be vigilant. Call tower immediately as soon as you hear the airplane in front of you, ready to take off, they'll say hold short number seven. Um, and then they'll eventually give you a lineup and wait, very likely, and then clear for takeoff, um, right hand turn approved. Take off like normal. We don't do anything different here. Everybody's in a single airplane, a single flight. Um, we don't want any confusing procedures. You don't have to extend unless the tower tells you to, and if they tell you to, it's no big deal. Take off, get 400, 500 feet up, 50 feet up, whatever you normally do, turn on course, but should, as you're lined up and waiting, you should keep an eye on that airplane that's in front of you in line. You're going to be following them for a long, long time. These, this sequence, by the way, is based upon the speed that you gave me. If you are a 172 and you said 138 knots, I know better and I can correct that. <laughs> if you, laugh, it happens. <laughs> if you're a commander and you say 90 knots, I know you don't go that, I know you don't go that fast, and I know you can't climb the 300 feet. That's the gear okay. down speed. That's the gear down yeah. um, That's for the turbo. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, keep an eye on that airplane that's in front of you. If I misjudged where to put you, or if you gave me um, an optimistic cruise speed, um, and the person in front of you gave me a, a pessimistic cruise speed, we could have an issue, and that happens. Um, but we have altitude separation there as well. Um, to, to kind of build on, on the answer to your question, um, altitude separation and speed separation, which, which by virtue of the speed differentials stretches the group out over time. Um, the folks who are not in the head start group are also layered. 3,500 feet, 4,000, 4,500. I'll talk about this a little bit more. Starting to get some of you guys going. We're eastbound. What's this 4,500 stuff? Talk about that. Um, 555, 6,500. 6, so that group continues to stretch out. And if somebody's zooming a little faster or a little slower, or whatever, your 500 foot separation, which is standard uh, separation. The Head Start group only has 300 foot separation. So they have a little bit less. They're slower airplanes um, and uh, a little easier to pick out. But. Um, Make a northbound turn like you normally do. Climb to your assigned altitude. You folks will get, and you didn't see it in the itinerary, but folks who have been on the air tour before know you have that assigned altitude I just mentioned. But there's going to be an asterisk next to it for the vast majority of you because we're climbing northbound out of flying cloud under a class Bravo ring. Normally, and we're going to be kind of wrapping around the north side of the cities. Normally in the air tour we haven't had to do that, but this year it's just something we have to be conscious of. So you fly your altitude until you kind of break free of this restrictive class problem airspace, which is due north of Anoka County. <coughs> That's this picture right here. So you take off on a flying cloud. This is, again, assuming we use 2-8 left. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Uh, 500 feet up, whatever it is. Turn, fly northbound. Please understand that flying a heading of 360 with what is likely to be a 25-knot wind aloft, 2 or 3,000 feet out of the southwest, 
could push you into Crystal Splash Delta. Um, you can't really use Gopher as an in route waypoint because it's going to take you through Crystal's Class Delta. We are not calling Crystal for a transition. We do not want 42 airplanes <laughs> calling Crystal. Other flight schools and base tenants trying to go buzzing around on Crystal, uh, at Crystal on a Saturday morning. Um, I have spoken with, uh, as we always do in the air tour, with the managers of Crystal and Anoka and Flying Cloud, the airport manager of Flying Cloud, the ATC managers to the airports, Tracon manager, and ARTCC manager, Minneapolis Center, and Minneapolis Approach Departure Control. Um, we started doing this about seven years ago, um, and uh, they like the input, and they like knowing why there's a line of airplanes <laughs> It's really cool to see. Um, and in fact, on two air tours, the, de the first destination has been only 60 or 70 nautical miles away, um, so we have had airplanes landing at the first destination where there, when there are still three or four airplanes yet to take off on a flying cloud. So it is fun to watch. Um, so stay west of Crystal's Class Delta surface area at least three miles. I told the tower would be at least three miles away, but probably four or five miles to the west. Um, and I told the Nova County would probably be about five miles to the northwest of them. You see this line right here, uh, the, the chart is cut off, but this line right here and this line right here are the end of the class problem airspace. This is that cutout they kind of gave um, to those folks in Benson for the glider operation. So there's no class problem airspace right here. Once you get north of Anoka, you don't need to be relegated anymore to below 6,000, excuse me, MSL or below 4,000, or even in here below 3,000. So review your terminal area chart, please, between now and Saturday. Just understand the airspace you're dealing with. For the most part, you're going to launch right away be under the 4,000 foot MSL ring of the class Bravo. I would stay at that 3,500 feet, 3,600 feet, 3,700 feet, 3,100 feet, whatever you choose. The Head Start group, by the way, if you're in the Head Start group, you don't have to worry about staying under Class B because you're going to be at 2,000, 2,300, 2,600, or 3,000. Fly that altitude. The rest of the folks, please be somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000, and we'll work it out. We'll rely on speed differentials to keep us separated for a while. But if you're worried about, if, if you're flying a... Uh, you know, a, an Archer or a Comanche or a Cherokee 6 or something like that, or a 182, which we have a plethora of in this air tour, don't be too worried about creeping up on the back of a Taylor Craft in the Head Start group. By the time you take off the Head Start group, the back of the Head Start group is going to be up here. You may not even overtake them by the time we get to the nerf drop. So um, it takes time to catch those airplanes. They're slow, but no offense, but they're going 90 knots and you're going 130 knots. So it's going to take you a while to get them. The, the, People up front are the people that need to be keeping their eye out for the, the you know, Peter and the Bonanza. You need to be keeping your eye out for the head start, so please be above 3,000 feet. Um, I'll talk about communication next in a minute, too. But, um, but once you're north of Minoka County, climb without restriction to your altitude, whether it's 35, 45, 65, whatever. We will not be right way for altitude. What I mean is some of you are going to have 4,000, which is a westbound IFR altitude. 4,500, a westbound VFR altitude, and same for 6 and 65, right? And some of you are going to have uh, 5,000, which is an eastbound but IFR altitude. We're VFR pilots, VFR airplanes playing on a VFR day. Um, again, I've worked this out with Center. Center knows what we're doing. They know the altitudes that we're going to be flying at, and they understand that the IFR traffic that they're controlling in the area or VFR traffic that they're talking with, uh, they're going to explain this to. So, but generally, it's a see and avoid flight like it always is. And these altitudes are a necessary deviation from aim recommended procedures. So, um, Ray, you had a question? Uh, we get that in writing? Uh, just do uh, Is there any particular <laughs> place that you want us to uh, turn northeast? Uh, it's just visual. Good, good you question. Want, At what point do we do yeah, this? Do you just want us to eyeball it, or where do you want us to turn? Yeah, eyeball it. You know, I, 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 I tried I for life for me to find a fix or uh, you know a good waypoint on the terminal area chart to, to identify. Um, but you know, I, I think yeah, being gopher as soon as you you know, which if, if you're not doing this tune twist stuff, <laughs> who does? Um, how are you going to know what gopher? The river is? is a good place to turn. What's that? The river is a good place. The river is, yeah, exactly. So as you're approaching the river and you see that, you know, this golf course, who knows, there's nine golf courses right there. This bridge, um, which I think is the dam, um, you know, who knows, there's a bunch of bridges going across. That map will be in your slides that are coming up? 
Um, it's not. I can add it to that to that briefing uh, to the to the itinerary. I, I can add this I don't exactly. Get too no, no, it's a very good question, but but you're right. There's no there's, yeah, there's no well defined point. A lot of times we use an airport or something, and we just don't have that. <laughs> um, but the big thing is, make sure you don't get into Noka County or Crystal's class Delta. Any other questions about the route or the altitudes? Again, it's a little different, but we were a little different. 42 airplanes, same way, same day. Um, and route. Once you're 10 miles, um, now we're clear of the class Delta surface area here at Flying Cloud, five miles out, but it's going to be busy and things like that, so you might forget. But remember, by the time you're 10 miles away from Flying Cloud, you're clear of their airspace, you need no communications with them. They're not going to give you any traffic calls. Trust me, they've got their hands full. Uh, switch over to 122.75. For those of you who have gone on previous air tours, we've used 23.45. Um, John Aiton, who was in that uh, nice picture of a cardinal about five slides back, sent me an email correcting me and saying, you know, we've been working in a gray area with 2345. It's getting more and more frowned upon. 2275 is the right freak. So for those of you who have been on past air tours, um, that was my mistake. Please don't use 2345. Please use 2275. That's the air-to-air -to -air -to -air freak. We're going to use that from 5 to 10 miles away from Flying Cloud until you're about 15, 20 miles outside of Madeline Island and uh, switch over to listen to the ATIS and, and talk to some type of things. But there's no frequency for Darrell's airport that you know of, Matt? He uses 122.8. 22.8, okay. Um, I, I think it'll be safer if we use 22.75 and stay on that. The reason is it's gonna be a nice Saturday morning in October, just before everybody has to winterize their machines and put them in the barn for the winter. I think 122.8 is gonna be nuts in terms of frequency from local traffic, right? Everybody in, in Wisconsin, Minnesota talking on that frequency. I think we should stick to 2275, make our radio calls at the bomb drop. We'll talk about that in a minute. On 2275. So we're going to be on this frequency until we get to Madeline Island. Uh, if, you, if you want, uh, and I recommend that you use 2275 on the return flight from Madeline back to the cities, it, it just tends to be a little entertaining. Folks are always talking about good stuff, making fun of slow airplanes and fast airplanes. It's, it's fun to listen. Um, report passing prominent landmarks for situational awareness of, of other airplanes in the group. Um, just say air tour traffic or air tour, however you want to do it. Uh, air tour traffic, this is Cessna 345, crossing the, the St. Croix River um, near Grantsburg, and I'm at 4,500 feet. The airplane behind you is going to know whether they're catching up to you. The airplane ahead of you is going to say, hey, I'm just crossing the river right now and I'm 500 feet below you and they'll start looking for you. So nothing formal there. You'll pick it up. Um, a lot of, how many folks have been on the air tour before? Um, so there's going to be a lot of chatter going. If you're totally new to it, don't worry about it. It's far less formal than using the radios at a non-tower airport. Is so, um, I think a couple that will be helpful. Due north of Anoka, say air tour traffic, Cessna 345, I'm north of Anoka, beginning my climb from 3,200 feet to 6,000 feet. Um, approaching uh, RZN, which is about, what, eight miles from our target drop, that's when most people, except for this, a couple of Cirruses and Bonanzas and Barons that, are, that need to start their descent 30, 40 miles out, but that's when most of the Cessnas and Cherokees and things like that are going to need to start down as as they're kind of crossing um, RZN, uh, Burnett County. Approaching Burnett County, starting the descent. Um, I have changing frequency there because I just kind of copied this from last year. Not changing frequency, don't do that. Um, starting descent for the target drop. Again, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, maintain your assigned altitudes unless you as the pilot in command of a VFR airplane see and avoid uh, deem necessary to change. If you want to offset your course, if you see another airplane, you want to work with them, you, you don't feel comfortable doing 4,000 feet eastbound, you want to do 4,200 feet, that's okay, just please communicate so other people know, particularly those within two or three airplanes either side of you know what to expect. Questions on the en route stuff? Good, because this is the easy stuff. All right. Sounds like going with us this year. Um, Connors Lake, I, I uh, dug up the identifier. Some of you folks may have GPSs. I want to say like the handheld Garmin's are really good at this, but uh, I've been disconnected, so I don't know if, if your panel mount Garmin's can find this or not. Uh, Mueller Rand might be able to. Uh, 2WS2, one. 
2WS2 is the um, the identifier. So if you can find that and your GPS can point you there, please don't turn direct to off of Flying Cloud. Remember, you got to go north, get around Class Delta for Crystal. Press direct to as you're getting close to the Mississippi River. Um, but it's called Connors Lake. Anybody have trouble finding the airport on the chart? Anybody realize I'm totally full of it with those pictures that I sent you on the itinerary? Bad bit? Okay, good. That's bad bit. <laughs> I'll correct myself there. Uh, join uh, left downwind runway 1A. I got a picture of this in a minute. I got several pictures in the bomb drop. Uh, left downwind runway 1A. This is going to be the safest, easiest procedure for us to do this without having any traffic issues, but also maximize the fun. I'm not too worried about airplanes being a mile separated on downwind base final, because we're not landing. You don't need room for that, that airplane in front of you to slow down to final approach speed, land, and finally taxi off the runway. We're just kind of buzzing, dropping a, a, a projectile, and then hitting the road. So if you're tighter than you normally are compared to being in the traffic pattern, we're normally, you know, two, three, four miles apart, it's okay. I, I, you know, I don't want to see you get a mile apart, because the airplane in front of you might really want to maximize their chances of winning that $10 gift certificate and slow down to stall plus 0. 0.4 knots. <laughs> um, and you don't, and you go through speed. So, you know, so I keep it more than a mile so you don't have to focus on traffic separation when you're barely above the ground. We'll talk about that in a second. But, um, <coughs> you know, don't, don't be worried if there's an airplane a mile and a half in front of you. Most of us, if you're looking up the tail of an airplane a mile and a half, most of us can't really see it anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. So I've got a Cirrus, so I'm not dropping anything. So do I just go straight to Madeline? So let's talk about that. Um, I, Why not? You know, I think it's worth doing a flyby. Uh, Matt said the, the owner of the airport's going to be out there with a, he's flying, so probably not a beer. It's early in the morning, but it's Wisconsin. Um, so he'll be, uh, he'll be out there watching with his wife. Um, it'd be great to have another airplane fly by and just buzz by. Do you have a, a little whiskey hatch window, a little storm window? No. Um, we're going to have to talk to the flat buyers. That's a problem. Um, let's, let's talk, because there's some innovative ways that we may be able to figure that out. There's some really, <laughs> smart, you could pull the really shoot smart people. Really smart people. Really smart We may be able to figure out how to kind of weave a piece of yarn through a fresh air vent and just kind of hold it for eight miles. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. I was serious. So, <laughs> Um, that was serious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. At an altitude of 2,000 feet, we're going to kind of cross south of the airport and fly a full left downward for runway 1A. Again, a picture in a minute. Traffic pattern altitude is 2,000 feet. The, the um, uh, uh, airport elevation is estimated to be about 1,000 feet. That's pretty close. Yeah. Good, it's Wisconsin. Good enough. Um, minimum drop altitude, uh, and we're going to be dropping as we fly down runway. 18. Uh, and uh, these balls, by the way, I, I, it took every ounce of willpower to not buy nothing but Vikings and Twins. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because most of you know these are being donated to the local school. And nothing would be better than seeing the look on the faces of the folks in the school, in the administration room, open up a bag and go, we got all these great balls for the kids. And they all say Vikings. On <laughs> but, but, Minimum drop altitude 100 feet AGL, 1100 feet on your altimeters. That's minimum. That, I'm not saying go to 100 feet. We have some folks who might do 99 feet. There's always a rule breaker. In every <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, that's the minimum. It's 100 feet AGL, 1100 feet on your altimeter. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about strategy in a second, but very briefly, um, after you drop, the, the target's going to be located, I believe. It's going to be easy to see. The southeast side, so it'll be off your left. The far end of the airport, which will be advantageous because the wind out of the southwest is going to kind of push things to the east. Not as nearly as much as you think, but um, but you're going to have the opportunity to fly a normal pattern. This is how I would do it. I would I would be at 2,000 feet MSL, 1,000 AGL, I'll beam the numbers, reduce my power, carb heat, whatever you normally do for your approach to land in your airplane, flaps, gear, however you do it, um, and I would descend uh, make my turn to base somewhere, you know, 600 feet above ground like you normally do. Uh, turn a mile final, whatever you normally do, and, and this is, you know, assuming that you're not backed up for traffic or extended for traffic. Turn final, and normally that nice descent has you crossing the runway threshold around 50 feet up, right? 
So as you approach the runway, you'll be roughly 100 feet above the ground. Um, it's not rocket science. Add power to whatever you feel comfortable flying for the approach. I'll, I'll build on that in a second. And fly down the runway. And you'll have about a third of a mile to kind of fine tune it. You'll see the target as you're on downwind, obviously. So you don't need to find the target running the runway. But um, you'll have an opportunity to kind of fine tune your altitude and get ready, get ready, get ready. I highly recommend you have your passenger. If you have one, drop the target out of the airplane so you can focus on flying. Please do not stall the airplane. Um, yes, the slower you are going, the more accurate in theory you will be. But I guarantee you this, you will not be accurate. Um, you will be terrible at dropping this and getting anywhere near the target. And I say that because in 2008, we did this with flower bags, and the winner was, I think, 185 feet from the target. The winner. And the loser, I think. Well, we won't. We won't. You, know, I just, you got a little. A little so, we won't go there, Ben. Hey, Ben. Yes. I don't want to sound like a uh, wimpy chicken. But, no, this is what we need. Yeah, this is what um, we need to bring up. I have not done anything like that before and so I was not sure I wanted to drop. Yep. So but it sounds like we're encouraged. Yes. To participate. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know that's part of the fun. And remember hundred feet is the minimum. You, yeah. you know if you're really dying to get a ten dollar gift certificate, <laughs> you know we, we got issues. So um, don't don't push it. Don't be unsafe. I've dropped one flower bag at the 2008 Air Tour, and that's all the experience I have with dropping stuff out of airplanes, potentially. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just doing this. Yeah, it's just doing Hey, Dan. Um, hey, Dan. So, but, yeah, I, I highly recommend you drop. Um, you know, there are ways to mitigate the risk, but you will be low if you choose to go down to 100 feet. Um, I don't recommend you go slow. I recommend you get to that, you know, approach end of the runway, and you add cruise power. 2300 at what kind of airplane? Aero. Arrow, okay, so go just shoot it up to 23, 24 inches, whatever it is, um, and uh, just drive the runway. If you want to have your gear down, you have your flap, whatever configuration, you, you have a few days to think about it, but do what's safe. Um, and, uh, uh, and go ahead and drop. Don't, you know, if, if you're 600 feet from the target, who cares? It's a lot of fun. And, it's one more ball the kids get. So. And in the Piper, you know, all you got is the little hatch. Right, right exactly. Which side. is why we got a whole lot of Piper friendly balls over here. <laughs> 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 exactly. Right. So, radio calls? Ah, good question. I didn't mention that. Um, make radio calls the exact same way you would at any other non tower airport on 122.75. Let's not switch over to Daryl's frequency at 22.8. Let's use 122.75, same one, so that people that are 30 miles out are kind of gauging are they extending downwinds? How's this working out? Um, but uh, yeah, entering downwind, runway 18, turning left base, two miles out, runway 18, final runway 18, um, and climbing out. Kind of Bombs away. What's that? Bombs away. Bombs away. Yeah. I think we'll hear a few of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it's more, it's, it's you know, scientific as you want to get, it's really tough to get anywhere close. Also don't hit the ground, 100 feet is low, and 100 feet is the minimum, but we, you know, we did the flower bag drop in 2008 at 500 feet as a minimum at Breezy Point, that was what the airport association wanted us to do as a minimum, just to be neighborly. Um, and it's really hard for 500 feet, so the folks who want to go down to 100 feet, uh, go down to 100 feet, and uh, but but don't get slow. Don't be at stall plus 10 knots. Be at stall plus 30 knots. Um, if you're if you're not a commander, you can go that fast. But if you uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but be careful. I think it's going to be less intimidating and, and more safe than than you may think. But this is new to pretty much all of us. We have folks who have dropped thousands of bombs in in Air Force airplanes over the years but probably for more than 100 feet AGL. We had uh, one gentleman who was going with was a, a U.S. Air Force colonel. I was going to, he's a co-worker of mine, uh, and kick stuff out the back of a C-130 all the time at 30 feet with night vision goggles and crazy stuff like that. But this is new to even him. Light airplanes, daylight, uh, um, daylight. softball, uh, you know. So uh, have fun with it. Be, be safe. Yeah. And can I ask, what is the trajectory of, of a projectile? We'll get there, we'll get there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get a strategy. Strategy's coming up. That's, that's no, I mean, as far as the airplane goes, will they hit the tail? Or, or? Um, 
it, you know, it kind of depends on how you drop. If you have the piper and you can, I would kind of reach kind of up and out. You know, if you're going 100, 120 knots, it's a little tough, but you can kind of get your arm up and out and raised up a little bit. But, you know, you may want to select your ball based on that concern. Um, some of the lighter balls and things like that that don't have, right, the little poop ball. Um, and if, if you're not seeing what you want, I can, I can go grab, or just go buy one and, and drop it. But that little, you know, Matt showed that little poop ball, that thing, it's really a, a one ounce sponge, if even an ounce. That's not going to hurt a thing. So, yeah, very good question. I didn't mention that. Paul, you had something? Yeah, even a just regardless of the wind, we're assuming that's on light and loose or favoring one. I think it's going to be out of the southwest pushing 10 knots that time in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but even if it's out of the north, uh, well, if it's out of the north, uh, it would have to be more than 10 knots out of the north for us to change it up. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I don't see that being the case. Which means it will. But... I, I've done the earth drop summer for Okay. Every year they remind us not to. Right. <laughs> yes, project, project that. You'll notice in my emails, my personal emails, I did not use the word bomb. I used project that. Yeah, and there's a reason for that. Yeah. A lot of people call it a mail drop. Mail drop, okay. I'm like, mail away. Nerve, nerve away. Um, after you make the drop, please don't assume that you need to, to do something instantaneously and fumble and get into a 30 degree bank at 100 feet AGM. But after you make the drop, stabilize yourself, look back in front of you, add full power, and if you have any flaps gear or carbine, take care of that junk, and just make a nice, smooth, wide, five degrees of bank, you're at 100 feet ATL, you don't need to be doing 30, um, five degrees of bank, nice, smooth, wide, climbing right-hand turn out of the drop pin. Um, I had a picture in the itinerary showing you guys bombing this nine foot long runway. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that, it's this giant thing right next to it, which is obviously a runway 1836. Um, this is called Connors Lake. So did Daryl misspell his airport? Did they misspell this? Did Steve Jobs misspell this? I was intentional. Okay, all right. Um, anyway, it's this strip right here. Here's a better, uh, or here's where we're gonna fly, right? So this is coming uh, coming from the cities. This is more compact than you need to be. Please don't be on a on a 50 yard downwind. Be a mile out. Whatever you normally do. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, but uh, come out here and begin your descent base final. And the target's going to be down here somewhere ish, right? So you're going to be able to kind of level off 100 feet AGL or higher if you choose. It'd be a thousand feet AGL. It doesn't matter. And just drive the runway and get stabilized and prepare to drop drop that bomb. Um, and here's a, here's, a, a little, here's a little tighter view. Yeah. Um, the target's going to be on the left, right? I believe so. And, and the wind, so the target, um, if this is the target right here and the wind is blowing up like this, um, yeah, I mean, you may, right window, left window, depending on what you drop. Yeah, these, this is, you, you kind of have this space all to yourself because, you know, we're not doing any formation drops or anything crazy like that. So, yep, do, do whatever you want. Yep, exactly. Very good question. I don't think that, especially if you're at 100 feet EGL, I don't think the wind is going to push it as much as you are thinking. But that also is determined by the ball that you choose. I mean, there's a couple of those uh, rubberized baseballs that weigh three pounds. And those are not going to move, I don't, I don't think. They're just going to go like that. And then there's Matt's thing over there, which is going to be like a paper airplane and end up in the next county. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Any other questions on on the drop itself. This is kind of what I want you to do on the way out. Again, this is tight because of the size of my iPhone screen, but um, just make a nice sweeping right-hand turn. The idea is we've got airplanes coming in here at 1,000 AGL, flying this pattern, and then departing the other way and climbing out. You know, try and stay a couple of miles away. So it's a nice kind of elongated S to get out of there so that departing traffic isn't conflicting with the right -hand. Any inputs on that? I've never done this before. I felt this was a good way to build this. Anybody have any thoughts or concerns about this? This is the part that kind of gets you know, the most attention from me in terms of safety. Right. It's just reminding people to have a real long crosswind and try not to do your usual flying distance to the runway crosswind. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So folks, and folks who have a preference of just kind of flying crosswinds that take you to here, the line I previously drew, and then you know, are, are cutting the engine and slipping it in. We got a couple of decathlons, a couple of Centabrias uh, going with. Um, if there's nobody in front of you and there's a bunch of people lined up behind you, that may be advantageous. But I, 
but yeah, right. Like joining, joining up. Just oh, oh, on the exit. Yeah, on, on the, the exit. Entrance. Entrance. Yeah, yeah. Make a nice wide sweeping turn. On the, on the entrance. So if you're coming up, yep. just make sure you don't hug the field too close to your approach, so that there's room for people turning away. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, in case they get drifted, particularly by a southwest wind, that's a good point. Yeah. And hopefully they'll be down lower and climbing out. But if somebody wants to drop at 800 AGL, they're going to be 200 feet below somebody crossing right over. Now, in reality, hopefully that person's going to be a mile or two south of the field as they do that. This is more stretched out than my picture shows. But, uh, but yeah, good, good point. Any other additions? We want to go a couple miles north before we turn northeast. If you, if that's your normal pattern, I would say fly your normal pattern. It'll be the safest thing. It's, it's a habit that you have. No, I mean after, after. Uh, other parts, other parts, yeah. Um, not pumped after you delivered the mail. Right? Um, yeah, so as you're climbing out, if you make a nice wide right turn and you're climbing out, um, you, yeah, you'll you'll probably be about two miles away to the east as you're climbing out, and you'll kind of be looking down on folks turning base and things. So you'll be able to gauge that a little bit too. Um, there's a whole lot of questions that I can't definitively answer. But whenever we get on the air tour in, in busy segments like that, I'm always impressed by how professional and safe the pilots flying are. They always make excellent decisions, and you, you will too if it gets busy. But if you are seeing people extending five miles to drop their mail, um, you know, just, just be aware that you're probably going to want to be a little further east and higher before you hit direct enter enter to 4R5. Good, good, very important. Right? Uh, in the past, at destination, you orbited. Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. yeah. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, and it's debatable as to whether or not that improves the situation or not. So, for the folks who haven't uh, experienced it, it happens, it seems to have happened almost every year. We'll get to that kind of midpoint where it's a short leg and we have a whole lot of jam up there. One of the issues we often have is we're landing, and folks have to land, stop, back taxi, clear, right? And so, downwinds often get extended four or five miles. I don't see that as being as big of an issue here because we're not landing we're that stopping um, pressure um, but I, I I'm not flying my own airplane this year uh, I'm, I'm sitting in the back and drinking a cocktail and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but and uh, uh, it's I, a tail yeah, well, I mean, right now, <laughs> socially <laughs> um, so uh, use your judgment, like a like a busy non-tower airport. Yeah, I, I will not be doing that this year. In the past, I've set up overhead at 3,000 AGL and just kind of played air traffic controller, um, very very thick quotation marks because I'm not skilled in that realm. But uh, that will not be the case this year. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, other questions on this? What's the target look like? Uh, not a big cartoon X, but I think it's a 40 by 40 blue tarp. Is that is that math left? So now I'm talking to myself. Uh, it's a 40 by 40 tarp, and I think it's blue. You'll you'll see it. Um, it it'll be a big square on the one end. So keep your keep your eyes peeled as you're up down there. Um, it won't have the big tarp. For those of you that did 2008, Hiroshi and uh, a gal named Kristen spent. Uh, 38 pounds of, of Krylon from Menards and uh, a couple of days spray painting a target and it said hit me, it was great. Um, Daryl's Daryl, the only the airport's not going to do that to his target for us. All right, just a profile view of what this is going to look like. 100 feet AGL again is the minimum. Feel free to be up in here anywhere. Um, if that's the target, airplane flies by. Uh, for anybody who does computer design, this, this animation in PowerPoint is laughable, so I apologize, but it gets the point across. And, and off you go. So it's, it's no more complicated than that. Three miles. So whoever has the orange bob looking thing, do a pretty good thing. Uh, a lot of you folks are, are, you know, you've met the strategy. How, you know, how far ahead do I, I drop it? I really don't know. I've only done one of these. It was with a paper sack. Um, with flour inside of it, and um, we were 500 feet up. I don't have any good answers. There are several, for those of you math centric folks, you can Google it a little bit and you can kind of play with terminal velocities and the size of the ball, the weight of the ball, um, the wind, and how that factors. There are people who have 
who Did have um, desecrated E6Bs and made them into mail drop calculators. <laughs> um, so there's all kinds of different options. If you really want to play with it, it's, it's actually pretty simple. You just come up with the weight of the ball, the size of the ball, your estimated terminal velocity of the ball, the speed, and you just put it into this simple chart. <laughs> it's really not bad. If you need a copy, just let me know. I've got a completed form, but I'm not, not going to share it with you. Right and it's estimated win, so it's probably not that. But, um, so uh, all I can tell you is I, I would say jump on YouTube, jump on Google, jump on some chat boards if you're in them. Um, and talk to pals. It's going to be really the only info you're going to find on it. Um, it seemed like everybody always dropped them way too early and significantly overestimated the effect of wind. There are many different types of balls. Nobody's picked up the foam rockets, which I thought are super cool. Um, but that'll play into it a little bit. But generally speaking, at 100 feet, I, I think you're going to drop it at foot one of the tarp, and it's probably going to land somewhere in the middle. That's my guess. Maybe I'm just BSing you, so <laughs> everybody goes <laughs> <long. laughs> so, um, so anyway, keep that in mind. Um, and there is a little bit of bounce to some of these balls, um, which, which may play in. But it's where the ball, somebody asked earlier, Paul asked earlier, it's where the ball stops and is done moving, not where the ball hits. Uh, and Matt, who just left, will be up there early. He's flying the Mooney first in line. He'll be there early to judge. And, and we'll have uh, we'll have a couple of gift certificates for the folks. Battle and Island. Um, if anybody's looking it up and looking for the city, it's La Pointe, Wisconsin. Four Romeo Five. Remember, there's no K in front of that Four Romeo Five. If you're having a tough time getting it into your garment, um, optional Apostle Island tour. I, I put this on here because one, I think it'll help stretch out the traffic a little bit. Two, if you've not been up there and done this before, it's the best stinking view going. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. We've had the perfect late summer for fall colors with all the water and the um, relatively warm temps. I talked to the airport manager up there a couple of days ago, and he said they just started over the weekend last week, and they just started to pop. He said next weekend is just the, you know, the center of fall colors um, in northern Wisconsin. So we have perfect timing up there this year. I'm glad it held out. It's going to be a nice day, a little breezy, so it might be a little bumpy. I highly recommend doing this. But I do understand that not everybody's comfortable in a single engine propeller piston airplane um, flying over Lake Superior, um, uh, you know, away from the landing area. So do this if you choose. Um, understand that there's no minimum altitude out here if you are at least a quarter mile away from those national park islands. So you can be lower if you choose. You can be up at 6,000 feet if you choose to make glide back to to 4 Romeo 5. It's all completely up to you, but I, I think this is worth doing. You just need to weigh your own uh, safety concerns over the next few days and think about it. Um, I, I very much anticipate one way to two. Oh, if you do fly over the islands, it's a minimum of 2,000 feet AGL. All this airspace up here and these nodes and this node and stuff, if you're, if you're within the blue solid and dotted areas, at least 2,000 feet AGL, so be up around 3,000 feet MSL or higher. Uh, but uh, uh, outside of that, there's no airspace or anything that's, that you're going to violate. So, um, arriving at Madeline, traffic pattern altitude fields around 600 feet. Traffic pattern altitude is 1,500 feet. I, I really anticipate runway 22 is going to be in use. If you are flying around the islands, and, and I have this. I have this worded as though you have done that optional tour, you've taken a look at the islands or maybe gone you know, over the middle of them or something like that, but it really is gorgeous, rocky shorelines. For anybody who's been up there kayaking or sailboating or anything like that, it's wonderful. Um, but this is worded as though you've done that optional tour. I think 2-2 is going to be active, winds uh, within 10 or 20 degrees of the runway, strong-ish, um, around 15 knots, but uh, down the runway which will help some of our faster, heavier airplanes uh, with a 3,000 foot runway. Um, but it's assuming you're coming this way to join the pattern for the airport. So it says crossover. Um, I wouldn't do midfield. Give yourself a little bit of time on downwind. Um, so cross just kind of on the far end of the runway down here and then join your left traffic pattern for runway 22. Some standard traffic patterns up there. There's no right pattern. Uh, but if you're coming straight up and you don't want to fly around because you're really hungry or whatever, 
or you don't want to fly out here in your single engine airplane, um, that's okay too. Just jump straight into a left downwind runway 22. Keep it simple. Don't, don't fly over, don't zip over in 500 plus pattern. It's going to be busy, especially if there's nobody right in front of you. You're not chewing up somebody's tail. It's better that you get in, land, get out of the way. Um, and for those of you folks who have been on the air tour, you know it's not stressful because you can always go around. Um, but just kind of keeping track of, of those four airplanes ahead of you when you're on a four mile extended downwind turning base can be challenging. Um, so uh, keep it simple, keep it quick. Any questions about pattern entry? If four is active, things are just reversed. Um, but I think we might see a little bit of a, you know, um, a mesh issue if half the folks decide to go and fly around the uh, apostles and half decide to just go straight in. but. Handle it like you would any other um, non-powered airport. It seems to work just fine on the tour. Uh, I've not seen any issues. This is our longest leg uh, in 12 years on the air tour, which means better separation. The longer we fly, the more we separate. So I think that's a good thing. Um, I'm not I'm not as concerned about this this year. And when I say concerned, usually it just means extended downwinds and a couple of go rounds here and there. I don't mean safety because folks find who they're following and they extend their downwind as necessary. But, um, any thoughts, additions, questions on that? Join the pattern, fly your pattern. If you need to extend, extend. Are you emailing out this point? I am, okay. yeah, yep. Uh, let's see here, parking for Romeo 5. This this is, um, aside from the nerf drop, this is you know my biggest concern is where are we going to, they have 18 spots on the main ramp in, uh, <coughs> Uh, but they do have a new construction area um, of the north side of the runway that we're going to be using. A couple of points. One, I, I think I mentioned it already, but bring your tow bar. We need your tow bar. Please have a tow bar. If you don't have a tow bar, please know who you can leech off of that has an airplane similar to yours. I think most of the Cessnas are the same, but um, have a tow bar. Fuel is not available at Madeline. They don't have some secret pump that just isn't on the list. Fuel is not available. Ashland nearby or someplace on the way back. It's 160 some odd miles from Flying Cloud. I think most of us will be fine. But some of us are dropping fuel so that we can fill up with passengers. So just understand, you should not be landing mid-fuel at Madeline. I don't think that's a concern for most people. But know that. Uh, bring your tow bar. So uh, I only throw this picture up because this was a very poorly briefed arrival in 2009, I want to say. I didn't do a great job of lining up parking and having marshallers in place because it was a bit, it was a, uh, it was a little delayed as to what our schedule was going to be in Faribault. Uh, Mr. Jansen is familiar with that. And uh, um, this is all, that was, that was my, uh, failure really in not having a good plan for parking and this is what all the pilots came up with on their own it was just wonderful I think Steve Bolick was probably one of the first guys there picked a good spot probably helped wave in the Cirrus the Bonanza Bonanza another I mean it was great the folks in the head start group just filed in line in the grass it was wonderful so if it starts to get busy um, just think about it a little bit get out of the way get up to the north side um, I think, is your seat still open, Peter? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ride with Peter because he's got the fastest toy out there. And it's going to get me to Battle and Island the quickest. And I'm going to bring batons and things like that. And, uh, I'm going to bring batons with so I can kind of scope it out. I haven't been to Madeline in 10 years. And I'll be waving folks in. Uh, for those of you concerned about where your airplane is going to be parked, if you have a heavy airplane or a tractable gear airplane, an airplane with very low clearance, I think we've got an RV7 with wheel pants going with, um, you won't be shoved in the grass and have damage to your airplane. We're going to keep those airplanes on those 18 spots. And I think we could probably get over 20 airplanes on those 18 spots out there, um, being careful, and still have everybody, still give everybody the ability to leave whenever they want, not be double parked, right? Um, but the folks, the Cessnas, the Cherokees, things like that, you know, it, it just doesn't matter what you taxi over. You're going to be zipping up into this new hangar construction area. He said there's much more room than you need for the rest of those airplanes up there. Roughly half of our group will be here on the main ramp. And the other half are going to be kind of up in here, a little bit in here, and maybe just shoved in here, 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 here. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But I don't, I don't think we'll have much outside of the main ramp in this area up here. Uh, Michael Dalzell, the airport manager up there, said they just mowed a couple of days ago. 
and uh, it's, it's perfectly suitable for pushing airplanes back. This is paved, this is taxiway, you can kind of get around out here. Uh, but when we depart Madeline Island and come back to the Twin Cities, whatever your home airport is, um, we're, not, we're not structured, really in any way. Choose your own altitude. I, I highly recommend listening to 122.75, but because we have some folks landing up here at 10.45 and eating lunch at 11.30 um, and getting ready to go home at noon, and some folks landing here at 1.15 because they're in the slow group, they're way in the back of the pack and they did the nerf drop and everything else, um, we're pretty spread out by the time it comes time to leave our final destination. So don't worry about the, and for anybody who's been on the air tour, you've seen this in the past, but don't worry about the order of airplanes for that final leg. Depart Madeline whenever you're done eating, whenever you're sick of looking at airplanes, take off and head home. Choose your own altitude, get flight following if you want, whatever you want to do, um, but uh, it's, it's really kind of your own flight. Everybody is so spread out on that leg, nobody really gets that close unless they're trying to. Uh, but uh, it, it's going to be my goal to make sure nobody's double parked and you can get out whenever you like. Um, I request that uh, you don't have to necessarily leave your airplane unlocked. Uh, but if you are parked somewhere and you have a travel tow bar, can you please leave it kind of like next to your nose wheel? Don't leave it connected to the airplane so that you start the engine and accidentally hit it with your propeller. <laughs> but can you leave it on the ground where you'll remember to see it? And if somebody needs to move you, if you're in the way, they can grab the tow bar. We've got all kinds of aviation professional people here um, that know how to be careful with your airplane if they have to move it. So I don't think it's going to be much of an issue, but expect a little bit of bobbing and weaving when you taxi in. Questions on parking concerns? We have. Uh, and just to emphasize, there's no taxiway here, obviously, and uh, it does get a little convoluted on the back taxi. Make a radio call. Yep. Up around. Great point. I wish I, I wish they knew we were coming and they would have put all this development area down here and this taxiway right here. They did not. Uh, I'm still a little ticked about it, but um, you're going to land on runway 22, and unless you can clear the runway in 1,075 feet, um, some of you can. Uh, especially in a 15 knot wind, but uh, I think 99% of us are going to be landing, probably turning around somewhere around here, or maybe in the turnaround down here at the far end. Hustle, please. Um, you know, V1, not rotate, but V1, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Um, hustle and get off of the runway. What's the area like on the, on the ramp side of the runway? Can you taxi on that? This grass right here? No. Yes. I, no. Okay. Down where the P is. Along the runway, exactly. No, you like can't. Like we've done in the past in yeah. Spirit Lake, Iowa, and yeah. in places where we've been pressed, and, and we've had the opportunity to use that to reduce the number of go-arounds. It sounds like no. No. Madeline Island is basically a wetland, so if you get off any kind of significant okay. surface, so you can pavement, be... pavement or go-around. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Very good question. So, um, and if there are any places we can cheat a little bit, um, I'll scope that out after I land and run around, but um, uh, but plan on landing, turn around, taxiing back fast. Now don't let this process rush your landing. Let it rush your taxi back to clear the runway after a safe landing. Don't let it rush your pattern, don't let it rush your landing, don't let it rush stopping the airplane. Don't blow a tire because somebody might have to go around behind you, let them go around. Um, and, uh, uh, understand you're probably going to want about a mile and a half spacing at least on final behind the airplane in front of you. I mean, a mile could work if they land and they turn around right here quick and they get off of the runway. Uh, but don't worry about being uber efficient in a group of 42 airplanes landing at the same 3,000 foot strip with no taxiway. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm not so sure I can make that turn on the runway. 75 feet? I don't have tail. It's a Comanche? Yeah. Uh, Peyton Turner went around on the ends, I believe, are set up for light like, so there, but yeah. uh, you know, I don't want to go all the way down. Like, 75 feet? I don't know. I'm trouble with pass or plane. Okay. Um, if you need room down here, and we've done this in the past too, by the way, we'll, we'll have one or two airplanes kind of gather down here, knowing there's a gap back here. No airplane, you know, some, some airplane just checking in on down and, hey, I'll land, I'll just kind of clear the runway down here and wait for you to land. And then somebody, so if somebody's right behind you, feel free to do that. They'll land, they'll turn around right here, you can turn around and we'll just have two airplanes kind of hold the hands together back to the ramp. Um, and that's worked very, very well in the past. Um, I don't know who plans this 
air tour thing, but they always seem to use runways and no taxiways. <laughs> uh, what frequency here? I don't. Uh, do I have this slide? It's 1229. I've got it in that itinerary. We're not using 0.75. I have it in the itinerary packet with some basic airport info. So. But yeah, we're using the normal CTAF. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, departing Madeline, leave it your own pace. I, I think I've mentioned most of this. But once you're five miles out, switch 2275 and take a listen. It's always kind of the fun part of the air tour. So a lot less stressful. <laughs> Any, um, oh, uh, the other thing too is there is no taxiway, so conduct your run up as you're holding short of a runway. Make sure there's no airplanes taking off or landing. We don't know what the locals are going to be doing. It's a nice day for anybody else to fly to Madeline Island. Do your run up there, taxi to the runway, turn around, take off, and go. If you work it out with somebody else to kind of tag along with them and back taxi with them, and you pull into the run up area, they turn around, take off, and then you go ahead and do that. But again, communicate. Everybody here is a qualified pilot, um, and you can make safe, smart decisions, but just don't push it because you know there's other people waiting. I know there's a lot of other engines running, but um, uh, don't, don't compromise your own decision making because of that. Um, any questions about the arrival or departure? I'll talk a little bit about lunch. But, um, lunch is going to be at the beach club, so if you've got uh, a smartphone you can find it pretty easily. The airport Oh, <laughs> Airport sits right here. This road goes right in, uh, right to downtown. It's about a mile and a half walk, maybe a little bit less, 1.3 miles, something like that. It's very walkable. But then, the most mentioned they're going to throw their travel bikes in. I think Keith, he's got some travel bikes, right? Um, and uh, so, if you want to do that, there are, to my knowledge, three vehicles that are going to be helping us out. One gentleman who was is not able to join us, but has an airport airplane based here, has a truck over here with a code on it. So I'll get that uh, opened up when I arrive first thing and just ask for a volunteer to kind of drive folks back and forth for maybe a half hour, switch out, grab lunch themselves, and maybe somebody else drive back and forth for a little while. Uh, Paul Wilharm, who has a uh, helicopter that used to be based here, is based there now. He's got a car. His uh, hangar neighbor has a car. We have somebody else here who has a vehicle. So yeah. if you don't want to walk, it's going to be a gorgeous day to walk, but if you don't want to or can't walk that far, there will be vehicles moving people back and forth. Uh, hitchhiking is encouraged on the island. Is that right? And there is a bike rental in town. Maybe some arrangement could be made that they could. I'll call them. Yeah, because they, they probably aren't. They, they wouldn't do it high season. I'd call them, but they wouldn't do it if they want. But for no. a group, yeah. they might. That's a good point. I'll, 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 I'll dig into that. Thanks. Um, and they used to have bikes at the airport. Does anybody know about that? Not anymore. I heard they all kind of rusted there. <laughs> Uh, so this guy's got a pickup truck, though. I mean, that you could easily put six, seven people in the back, and in five minutes, you're, you're there. Back yeah. Now. I've got yeah. a pickup truck on the island. Now, well, you, you've got, yeah, that's right. You've got one as well. So um, uh, I don't think it'll be a big issue. I think a lot of folks will want to kind of walk. And um, as we experienced in Spirit Lake, I want to say a whole bunch of locals just said, hey, what's going on? I'll just, you know, just local people have nothing to do with aviation start driving back and forth. So. It always seems to be kind of a fun little adventure in and of itself, uh, getting uh, from the airport to lunch. It's a nice road to bring rollerblades and a little, little razor, too, I've done a couple times. It works. It's really easy for, for I've, personal. I've rollerbladed that road before. From okay. Town and stuff. It's, okay. It's not bad. So feel free to grab your kid's scooter, you know, a bike or whatever. It sounds like it'll work well. No longboard. I mean, that's just um, <laughs> Any, anything else to add about Madeline? The beach club, they take credit <coughs> cards, um, should be a good lunch. They know what big group is coming, they didn't seem too worried about it. They have dining outside. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, and then a picture of the, I mean, it's, we got to put it in there. Oh. <laughs> any, uh, Who are you going to fly with? Anybody want to add anything else, ask anything else? Evidently nobody. <laughs> yeah. I don't, all right, I'll bite. Two weeks ago, I landed. Any other questions or additions? <laughs> <laughs> also, an also Ben, if, uh, if anybody's looking for a co pilot, uh, I know a couple people that might be going. Uh, okay. Yeah. We got a 172 that's got an open right seat. Open seat, and uh, yeah, anyway, that was that was on my notes too. Greg uh, Bradfold here, he's also got, uh, I believe, an open seat or more. Um, 